I'm absolutely captivated by 360 degree video. We're still in the early days of consumer VR, and we're all still hoping to see what innovations might come to narrative and storytelling. An early player in the 360 market, the PixPro team has been pushing the boundaries on panorama photos and videos, starting with the SP360, offering a two camera solution, and now delivering their first all-in-one, the Orbit 360 4K. It faces a lot of competition, but this gadget comes with a twist on the traditional dual-lens action camera setup. The basics are well-covered, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and NFC tap to pair. The monochrome LCD is easy to read in all conditions, and a big red circle is an easy target to hit when shooting on the go. Green and red indicators alert to usage, preventing some of the creeper aspects of walking around with a small see-everything camera. The only ding in operation? Quite a lot of functionality is controlled via these buttons, so something as simple as shifting between photo and video modes is offloaded to long pressing on a menu button. Not the most familiar way to control a camera. Popping open the case, the battery is swappable, which is a terrific consideration after spending time with Samsung's Gear 360. In addition to a micro USB charge and data port, the Orbit includes an audio input and an HDMI output, allowing you to record better audio and directly output your creations to a TV, respectively. Now, I mentioned a twist, and the Orbit surprises with asymmetrical lenses. There's a more traditional action camera field of view from the front and a half-sphere ultra-wide on the back, making this three cameras in one. It's a more flexible setup, but it does shift up the stitching lines on spherical content. And you really do want to aim that front where you think the most important action might take place. Video from that lens does tend to be sharper than from the rear ultra-wide angle camera. Because those stitching lines are not even, you do generally want to give this camera a little bit more distance than on symmetrical shooters. After about six feet, the effect of cutting pieces off calms down, but this can be helpful in hiding your mount or tripod. Kodak supplies some handy desktop software to help adjust each camera's field of view and where the stitch lines up. It's fairly straightforward to use, though I would recommend pulling files off the card instead of using the Orbit as a card reader. File transfer times on 4K video through the Orbit were about one-tenth the speed of my cheap USB 3 card reader. Using the PixPro software, I'm happy to report that quality has improved significantly from the early days of the SP360. Each file needs to be re-rendered when joining the front and back cameras into one ultra-wide rectangle. A Kodak used to cut the bitrate to a shockingly low output quality. Now, it's still a lossy output, but we're down to about half, and the output is noticeably better. Overall, video from the Orbit was competitive against the other solutions I've used recently, though I did feel the need to make more adjustments in the desktop software to get elements to line up. I'll have some samples linked below for people to take a look at finished 4K videos. The Android app unfortunately still feels a bit raw. The tap and pair works terrifically, but once the phone is connected, the view screen is slow to respond, and monitoring regularly fell into a pixelated, hard-to-follow view. And that brings us to the price. The Kodak PixPro Orbit 4K Adventure Pack with lens covers, a carry case, a tripod, and a remote control, that's pretty handy, retails for $499. This is Nikon key mission territory and represents a premium over the recent price cuts on Samsung's Gear 360. Kodak's camera looks to be more durable, more flexible, and significantly better accessorized. For example, replaceable lens covers if you ever drop the camera, you're out of luck on the Samsung. But actual output is pretty close in quality between the two, and Samsung's app is easier to use if you're using a Samsung phone. Now, I've really enjoyed my time using the Orbit, but it does require that little extra bit of nuance. If you don't think you'll benefit from the advanced feature set, you might want to save a little cash with another option. Now, what would you like to see shot in 360 degrees? I'm hoping to continue a series of vlogs and maybe even produce an interactive short film. Now, drop me a comment down below and let's see if we can make something cool together. As always, thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe here for future gadget reviews and editorials, and sharing these videos is greatly, greatly appreciated, what with YouTube being so scummy about monetization. You can find me around the web as some gadget guy, and I will catch you all on the next review.